Okay, welcome. Looks like a few people are here. Maybe two or three anyway. Um, so for you guys here kind of on time, uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and um, uh, let me know. Um, so if we get some more people, I might start talking about some topics like uh, the syllabus and stuff. But, uh, but yeah, since uh, we don't have too many people here yet, I don't want to say too much. But if you guys have questions, uh, shoot away. I'm going to share my screen here. So yeah, first of all, can uh, you guys that are here or gals, um, can you hear me? And, and also, can you see my screen now that I just shared? Maybe somebody can confirm that I'm getting through here. I can see you in the screen. All right, that's great. Thank you. Let's see how many people we got here. Oh, we got eight. Okay, good. Feel free to, you know, unmute yourself, ask a question anytime you want, um, or you can use the chat box. I got the chat box open. Um, if you're not familiar with Zoom, you know, um, there is a way to uh, send me a private message if, if you don't want the chat seen by everybody. So. We can try and figure that out um, for that. All right, um, anybody have a question here? Um, Want to shoot something out? Um, um, since we've got a few people here now, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll go ahead and start. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the syllabus, the course structure, and some stuff like that, just to get us started here. See if anybody <clears throat> that prompts anybody to ask some questions and stuff. So. Um, yeah, so um, I've, I've actually got two sections of the 430 here. So, um, so the, the, the blended section are, are free to join these sessions as well. So I'm, I'm just doing one session for, for everybody that's in 430, whether you're in the 01W, which is supposed to be officially a, you know, just completely online based course or the 0102B, which is supposed to be blended, okay. So if, if you guys aren't familiar with a blended course, um, they, they do have a, a scheduled face-to-face -face, uh, meeting time, but blended basically means that um, it gives flexibility for the instructor to uh, set requirements for, uh, for those meetings, basically, uh, which ones, are, if any, um, are required. Um, so in, in normal times, um, when I do blended courses, usually, um, a, uh, I mean, usually I still don't have any kind of required attendance or anything, although I might sometimes have like a, a few tests that we do face to face. So, so sometimes for the blended courses, I'll just have a few required sessions for some tests. Uh, but otherwise, I usually do use them as kind of more like help sessions or, or uh, get together for question and answer sessions and things, uh, especially when I have a lot of materials online, like we've got for the, the 430 here, um, uh, lecture videos and stuff. 
So, so and, and can I ask my question? And, and so both for the online 01W and the 02 blended, uh, at this point, I, I definitely have no uh, required um, face-to-face uh, attendance requirements. Okay, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna be starting out at least um, with everything uh, through these online. Uh, help sessions, uh, which I plan to run. We'll, we'll see if people ask questions and stuff. Um, but um, so we'll use those, and, and of course, uh, you know, all the materials and assignments and stuff are available through the My Leo Online Class Management System. So you should be able to get into uh, the the My Leo Online um, and see all that stuff. And if you can't, you know, you need to. Uh, get that taken care of immediately. So, so seek out some help from CTIS to make certain you get into your MyLeo online account. Um, um, so you probably, you really do need to get the textbook and do the readings, I think. So most students who kind of just blow off getting the textbook and, and, and actually doing some self-reading and self-study, a lot of them, I think, tend to regret it, right? So you don't really have to have the most recent version. Um, as long as you have seventh edition or something, I think there's, there's a couple more recent versions than that, or maybe even older ones would, would probably work fine as well. So most of the stuff that we need um, on this class um, uh, in the beginning chapters hasn't changed a whole lot from from the older versions um let me see uh so in case you don't know so i'll talk a little bit about the dev box if if, if people have questions on getting that set up although probably i have to work with you individually so i mean if you are having issues getting your uh, virtual dev box set up for the class you do need to work on that today and tomorrow uh, and email me or and and if if you're really having issues, I might send you, send a GA your way or, or me your way to kind of work in uh, person to person. So we'll see who, who has issues or not. Um, but, uh, but, but yeah, the, this, this folder, the, 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 uh, it, once you do get your dev box set up, uh, is actually a shared folder. So if, if I copy a file, uh, from my host machine into that repository that you cloned, uh, it should show up uh, in your folder and vice versa. So you can, you can put uh, files in here or in subdirectories and then copy those or see those on your host. So for example, I've got an electronic version that you can't see here of my textbook though. I think it's seventh edition. Um, if I copy it over here and uh, reload this, uh, you should be able to see the file. So I just copied that from on my host system into my repository directory so that I could see my textbook there. So, um, so yeah, there's our textbook. Seventh edition is this uh, sailing ship picture here. So. Um, so yeah, I mean, this class is, you know, basically about the, about learning about how operating systems work, okay? So, um, I, I mean, you know, I expect that most people at least know what I mean by an operating system um, at this point, um, uh, you know, working on uh, undergraduate computer science degree. So, I expect most people, you know, are using an operating system like Windows or Mac on a personal computer, so hopefully everybody has a personal computing system that can, you can set up your dev box with. Uh, if not, you need to let me know um, immediately. So. Um, so, you know, other common operating systems are like um, Apple, uh, iOS uh, on your phones or Android on your phone um, and lots of others, right? Um, I'm kind of slowly adding in uh, not only you know operating systems. So, so our main goals in the, ca the the class are to learn about different components of the operating systems, um, and we break up this course into five separate units. Uh, so we learn about. Um, so we start with just kind of an overview of, of what operating systems are. That's our first unit, uh, and then we talk about processes and threads. 
uh, and multi-threading and multi-programming uh, and that's our actually our second unit uh, and then we talk about um, concurrent programming um, which is an issue that you have to deal with when you're designing and developing operating systems and then we talk about modern memory management and virtual memory as our fourth component fourth unit um, and then we talk about job scheduling um, um, and, and, and process scheduling um, as our fifth unit here. So, so that, that's the main kind of goals of the course. So to, to kind of understand how those components work in an operating system like Windows or like Linux, Unix, um, things like that, right? Um, I'm kind of slowly adding in uh, some things about using the Linux operating system um, from the command line and um, using doing systems programming from a Linux operating system, although I don't have a lot of that in yet um, for this version of our course, but, but you may get a little bit of that. Uh, you'll definitely get that because you'll have to get your dev box up um, and be able to open up a Linux command line terminal and learn a few basic commands, which I can talk about um, a bit later um, on here. So. Uh, but uh, but yeah, we get back to the the syllabus. So, uh, but but yeah, you should definitely try and get that textbook um, and start reading. So basically, each unit we cover two chapters. So for the first three weeks, we're covering chapter one and two, which are kind of uh, hopefully a review of kind of the components of what a computer are in a computer. You know, memory, CPU, uh, things like that. Uh, and and then chapter two is is really the the start of of what are operating systems and what are the design goals of them and what are the major achievements of operating systems and things like that. Um, okay. Um, so I've already talked a little bit about the structure. Uh, if you scroll down here in the syllabus, I guess, I mean, it's um, on purpose. I don't have whole lots of detail in here. So there's a little bit about the, the structure, the, the schedule in terms of the units and when we cover stuff. So, so like I said, basically we use three weeks for each unit um, and it, it's broken down. Uh, so, so every unit, kind of the first week, you ought to do the readings from the first chapter, and then the second week, you should do the readings from the second chapter, and then the third week, we'll have a test over the unit, okay, so, and, and we'll repeat that five times, okay, and for every unit, I've got one written assignment, so I call those uh, problem sets or written problem sets, um, and I've got one programming assignment, all right, so basically, the problem set will be due kind of uh, uh, on Wednesday of the second week and the programming assignment will be due on Wednesday of the third week, okay? So kind of our, um, our beats for this class are, are you know, uh, you start off just, you have readings and, and lecture videos to watch uh, and you start working on the written problem set, which is due the middle of the second week of the unit. Um, so, so you wanna complete your readings on the two check textbook chapters um, and, and work on that problem set and try to get that done. Uh, by the end of the first week or, or early in the second week. And then we have a program assignment, which are worth a lot uh, of, of your points for this class. Um, um, and you should start working on those no later than beginning in the second week. And that's due in the middle of the third week. Okay? And then we have a test on Friday of the third week um, over that unit. All right. So that's the general structure. And, and our breakdown, um, uh, I think I've modified these points a little bit, but uh, in general, the tests are worth half of your assignment um, points, or sorry, the, the course points um, for the class. Um, so, so five exams on each of the five units, each one worth um, basically one letter grade or 10%. Um, and then roughly 25% for the written problem sets and 25% for the program assignments, although I might tweak those a little bit, so. Okay, so any, any questions so far on kind of 
the course structure assignments. So at the end, you're going to end up having basically five written problem sets that you do and submit and turn in, five program assignments that you submit and turn in, um, and five tests that, that you'll take online. So this semester, all the tests will be online uh, through my Leo um, system. So. Um, yeah, I will allow uh, groups this semester for the programming assignments. Um, please tell me who your groups are. Um, although I'll have requirements um, that you list your group members also in the files that you submit for the program assignments. Uh, and groups, though, do need to be relatively small. So, um, you know, if, if you want a group of more than three, you're going to have to get permission from me. Okay. And I do want the, the, the people working on groups for the program assignments, I mean, the group should be kind of self-contained. So, so groups shouldn't be sharing code with other groups. Um, um, you should be working on, uh, if you do form a, gro a group, so either yourself as an individual or the two or three people in your group should be the only ones that kind of look at your source code um, and um, uh, do the assignments and things, okay? Um, all right, so yeah, uh, I was planning on maybe talking a little bit more about program assignments, um, but um, I mean, you know, before you can get started on the program assignments, uh, you need to get your dev box uh, set up and running. So you should be doing that today, tomorrow. I have a task um, uh, um, already. So by the end of tomorrow, you need to complete um, my example 01 task. So to do that, once you have your dev box running, assuming hopefully everybody can get it running, um, you should log in and bring a terminal, uh, start up a terminal, and you'll have to change directory into uh, the repository. Um, and, and change into the, our particular repository, the CSCI 430. Sorry, um, in there, um, there are um, a bunch of subdirectories, um, uh, in, including there's an assignment subdirectory. Oh, by the way, I mean, you know, uh, you will learn a little bit of, of doing stuff from the, the Linux command line. Um, but, uh, but, I mean, you can browse these files, you know, use the file browser. It's, it's the same. It's just different views on the same file system, right? So if, if you bring up a file browser uh, from your home, you know, you should find, once you get your dev box set up, that there's a directory, subdirectory called repos. Um, and then in there, there's that, the, the, the CSCI 430, which is the repository for our class. Uh, and basically, this is a shared folder with the, the Git um, repository that you cloned or that, that you should clone as part of setting up your dev box here. So. And then in here, um, you've got the assignment. Uh, but what you need to do by tomorrow then um, is you need to get into this example 01 example assignment. So change directory into assignment, change into uh, example 01, and learn the basics of, of, of doing the, the stuff you need to do to submit the assignment. So all you need to do for tomorrow is get your dev box up, get into here, um, and do a make submit. All right. So this will create a file. So if you go and look in here, when, when you do a make submit, it basically creates a file called um, um, example one, uh, where is it? There it is, uh, the example one tar.gz file. So these are what we're going to be using to submit your assignments for this class. All right. So if you go into your file browser, you'll see it here. So, so basically when you get time, when you're working on your own assignment, on the actual assignments, you'll do the same thing. You'll do a make submit. Uh, you'll end up with a tar.gzip file. And this is what you need to upload to my Leo online to, um, you know, to, to submit your assignment for grading for the class basically, okay.
Um, but uh, but yeah, for this this first example assignment, it gathers a little bit of information about your system. So I can uh, so so first of all, you need to do this e either do this by Tuesday if you get your dev box up um, and and can do the make submit on the example one and then submit that file to the example one uh, folder in MyLeo online. Or if you don't have your dev box up by 5 p.m. tomorrow, you need to send me an email um, and give me a, a status report. You know what it is that's keeping you from getting the dev box. Uh, installed uh, and, and what help you need to, to get it up and running. Okay, so I, 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 a lot of people have successfully got it up already um, and are running. A few people are having issues. So, I mean, you know, if, if you have issues, don't worry, we'll get you set up at some point. So we'll figure out um, a way to get you set up. Um, but, um, um, but, but yeah, do try and make certain you get that set up and working by tomorrow um, at least. Did anybody have any quick um, questions about uh, setting up the dev box? Um, I mean, you know, I might have to mostly work one-on-one -on -one with people on that. So, so definitely send emails if you're having uh, issues. But, uh, but, but yeah, if you think you have kind of a general question, let me know, uh, shout it out. Um, So in general, when you get to the step where you've done your git clone and you change into your repository and you did your vagrant up, I can't do the vagrant up here because I'm, I'm in my virtual dev box. So, so this, this is my guest, it's not my host. Uh, but, but yeah, when you do this vagrant up command, um, if you do have problems, it's best um, if you can copy and paste that and, and just email that to me. So everything from the vagrant up Till it finished or, 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 or halted or had a problem or something. So, so select that in your terminal and do a copy. So uh, if, if you're a Windows user, I think the copy from a DOS command terminal prompt is just you hit enter and that'll copy it. Um, I'm not sure for the terminal on Mac OS. I think it's like shift control C maybe. So, so the terminals on, um, on Linux, if you want to copy, you have to do a shift control C that does a copy. Um, because uh, control C is, is how you uh, interrupt a program that, that you need to kill off uh, that's running in your terminal. So. All right. So no questions. So like I said, I mean, I have had quite a few people already um, have reported success getting it up, um, and but some have also had problems. Uh, a few. So so let me know what you're seeing. Uh, and like I think I already mentioned, if we have to, you know, we'll get you either individual with me or GA or something to help you get set up. Um, if all, if worse comes to worse, I've got alternatives. Um, so I've got, um, I've got some cloud, some access to some cloud um, um, instances that I could uh, possibly set up for some people if we need to. So, so we'll get you something that you can work on to do the development and the assignment and things in here. All right. Um, so, so a question about an error in D2L. Um, yeah, I'm not certain. Um, If um, I'll check the link, so so um, so sometimes when I copy and paste stuff, the, the link might be so I might have copied something from um, you know my section one of the course into section two, and then forgot to make sure I updated that link. So so yeah, the, if, if the link is not working, let me know the particular link, um, and I'll try to fix it. But you might have to go and find it by hand uh, by browsing the content. So. Yeah, we we can we can work on um, performance issues. So uh, we'll see here. So.
So in general, um, I think I mentioned somewhere, uh, it, it's probably best that you at least have four gigabytes of memory on your uh, desktop or laptop system you're attempting to do this. It would be better if you had more. If you have four, uh, it should work. So by default, the guest is set up to run using requesting four gigabytes of memory. Uh, so one thing that, that might be a performance issue if, if you only have four gigabytes on your host system is we might have to reduce that down a little bit to give a little bit more to your, your, uh, your host system. Like, like try and run the guest with only like three and a half. So sometimes it works fine requesting all the memory, um, but sometimes um, it might slow some things down a bit. So. Um, okay, so I, I covered these things in the video, but um, all right, I'll check that link, um, uh, Matt. So, um, So I say I'm thinking probably maybe the most useful thing um, that I could do is begin um, um, maybe showing you a few things. So, uh, like I said, most all the stuff should be in the video, um, so you can watch those as well. So I've, had, I've got a couple of videos to help you get started, from installing the dev box to uh, getting in here and working on the command line and working through an example assignment one. Um, so, oh, there was one thing um, I, I did want to mention. So for that example, assignment one, uh, uh, before I forget about it, if you do like I showed in the video, I, I can't remember if I mentioned this in the video uh, for our class or not, or I think I'm just using the same video for this in another class, so I probably didn't mention this. But if you do a make um, and you get an error that it can't link because it, find, it can't find some files. Um, we're set up uh, for the CSCI 430 class to use a common library uh, that we link against here. So, um, and I can't remember, I might have already done this step, so it might clean yourself. So here it tries to link uh, this library, but, um, um, if you don't do this step first, so if you change into the directory called libs, um, so, so under um, the top level here, there's a directory called libs, which has some, uh, some shared code, some shared libraries. Um, so initially that isn't built for you. So um, if I unbuild that, if I make it clean and I try and try and do my build again, you'll see what I'm talking about. So if you see this error uh, when you go to make, you know, the example assignment or your first programming assignment, uh, if you get a link error, it's because you need to go back and build that uh, that library, basically. So. Um, but yeah, here you'll, you'll see that it can't find this, this library. So this dash L means it's a library. It's trying to link in uh, libraries called simulator exception. Uh, it couldn't find it in this directory because I just, I just did a make clean and, and destroyed it. So what you, what you want to do is um, change into the libs directory. So from the, the top of your repository, just changing the libs. I do like a make clean and a make, just to make certain that it's created, right? And you should have a file called uh, libsimulatorexception.a in there. So when you have that, all of your assignments uh, in the example assignment should uh, build and link uh, correctly, okay? So all the assignments that I gave you um, should build um, 
as I gave them to you, okay? And so if they're not building, let me know immediately. So when you first go to your first assignment, um, if you do a make, everything should build um, and should create executables for you. If it doesn't, you know, let me know. Um, but I'm jumping ahead here a little bit. So let me take a step back. Is there any questions about that? Um, about getting that library um, set up? So the, the first video after the one um, where I, I kind of go through trying to get the dev box set up and installed um, is a video just about some basics of using the dev box. Okay, so that's, that's the first one you should watch after you get your dev box up. Uh, so in particular, uh, in the docs directory, I've got some, some documents, some reference documents you might find useful, uh, including this dev box reference that I made. Okay. So like I said, um, uh, I'm adding a little bit more of this. So, some, uh, so I might add in a, a goal of this class to learn how to use uh, a Linux Unix environment. So basically using the, 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 the command line to move around and, and maybe to administer things. And, and also, I mean, just from this class, you're gonna learn some basics of how to move around in the file system from a command line and how to use a build system like the make build system to build source code projects um, on a Linux operating system like this. Okay? So make is kind of an old technology, but it's still used uh, a lot uh, and you'll find it in a lot of places. There's, there's a lot, uh, of newer kinds of build systems that people use for more advanced projects. If you know, um, if you're doing JavaScript or Node projects or database projects or things, you might be using some other build system than Make. But uh, but but you'll still find it a lot. It's a useful thing to learn the basics of. So. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll mention, so again, I'm, I'm covering some stuff that I had in the video, but maybe I'll show you guys, you know, so, so once you get your terminal open, find out how to open up a, tr uh, a command line terminal in your dev box Linux environment. So you can go to activities and search for terminal uh, and run from one from there or add it to your, um, your doc if you want to. So, um, I mean, you know, like I've already shown, you, you, can, you can browse your file system using your uh, file browser, right? But you can get those same views um, of your file system uh, from your terminal using some basic commands. So those are usually the first things you have to learn. So when you first bring up a terminal, whether it's, it's a terminal in Linux or your command prompt terminal on Windows or a terminal on a Mac OS, you'll usually start in some notion of your home directory right? Uh, so on, on, on Linux, your home directory is going to be something like slash home slash vagrant. So, so that's the first place you'll start in. Um, so it's home and then your username, whatever your username is, right? Uh, the, so the first command you learn is ls. So this gives you a directory listing. So for example, if I want to list the files and the directories in the root of my, my file system, I can do an ls slash, right? So slash is the root on a Linux system of your file system. It's kind of like the C colon is the root of, of a file system on a Windows system. So Mac OS is actually a, a Linux, is actually a Unix derivative. So if you're a Mac OS person, when you bring up a term on Mac OS, you'll have the same thing. You can do an ls slash to see the root of the file system from, from Mac OS or Linux. Um, on, on Windows command prompt, you have to use the dir command instead of ls, and you'd have to do something like dir c colon to see the root of your file system from, from an from a ms-dos command prompt. So, so but that's the same idea there. So that's the root of our file system. From there, notice I've got a, uh, so the blue ones here, or the dark blue ones are, are actually subdirectories or folders. So, so I've got a directory called home in my root file system. So I can ls that, and that's where my user, the Ubuntu user and the Vagrant user that you'll be logged into by default, um, th their homes are in the slash home directory. Um, 
So I can list all the files in my home directory. So those should be the, the same folders basically as if I go to my home and look in my file browser. So I got my desktops, my documents, so on, right? Um, So, so you have to understand this concept of what your current working directory is. So on Linux and Unix systems, you use PWD to print your working directory. So I'm current, my, <coughs> my current directory is home vagrant. That's, that's where I'm at in the file system. So a lot of commands, if you don't specify, like for example, for the LS command, if you don't specify what directory uh, or what folder you want to list, it defaults to listing the files in your current directory. So these are equivalent. You know, I want to list the files in my home directory, or I just do, if, if my current directory is there, if I do an ls, it'll list the files in my current directory. All right. um, maybe the other quick thing I'll mention um, is all commands from a, a Unix, Linux command line, except what are known as command line parameters. This allows you to modify the behavior of the commands from the command line. So for example, a common one I use for directory listings is to do an ls-l. This will give me a long listing. So instead of just giving me the names of the files, it gives me each file, um, or in this case, all these files are directories. But it gives me each file or directory on its own line with extra information. So again, this is similar, uh, although not exactly the same as the information you get from doing a long uh, listing rather than an icon view listing uh, from your file browser, okay? So in this case, I'm getting all my files, but I'm getting um, some extra things like who owns it. So these are all owned by the Vagrant user. Uh, you get file permissions over here. So besides the color coding, I can kind of tell that these are all directories, uh, subdirectories because they start with a D here. So that means it's a directory. Um, the, this column here is the, the size of the file. So each, all these subdirectories take 4,096 bytes uh, here. The date the file was created and so on. So. Another flag I often use is dash H, which doesn't have a big effect. It just changes all size information that you might see to use a more human readable. So dash H stands for human readable. So in this case, instead of telling me in bytes, it tells me in kilobytes or megabytes or gigabytes if I have really big files on here. So, um, And you'll see me in these videos, um, I often just have an alias of D to this ls dash L dash H command. Uh, like that. So uh, instead of having to type ls-l-h all the time, um, I can create that, L, that alias. And so that's, that's equivalent. Now that's equivalent after I define the alias to typing ls-l-h. All right. Because I, I, I like to see the long directory listing to know what the permissions are on the files and who owns it and, and this other kinds of information. So. Okay, so you can change the notion of your current directory using the cd command, right? So in order to, to, do, to, to work on the projects and assignments for this class, you need to change into the assignment directory so you can use the make build system, right? So for example, to do that, I would have to change into repos. So now my current directory is home vagrant repos. Um, and if I do an ls or an ls-lh, um, I'll see that there's only one file in this directory. And then I can change into there. So now I'm in my, the top of my repository directory. And I've got all the files that you should have seen now when you cloned your directory. So all these subfolders, assignment, config, libs, uh, and so on. Um, you can, you know, I mean, you can, you can create files and make subdirectories from your file browser, or you can do that from your command, excuse me, from your command line using commands like make directory, move, copy, and stuff like that. So these are all basic, just manipulating your file system and moving files around, uh, 
but using a terminal instead of using a GUI in interface to drag and drop stuff. Um, um, all right, so and, and then, you know, I'll kind of skip over these uh, and, and, and kind of go back to, uh, we've got a basic make build system set up that you need to use to, to work on the assignments for this class, okay? So again, I'll go to the example assignment uh, to show using these. Um, so you can issue a make help. Um, you should get a list basically of all these. These are just the targets that you can do here. Should be mostly the same. Um, so, oh, actually not. Yeah, some of the targets are a little bit different. I should probably update this. This, this is, um, a reference, uh, but these are the targets for my other class. So, so you have slightly different targets, uh, but but a lot of them are the same. Not all of them are, though. So your your normal kind of workflow for working on assignments for this class is going to be uh, you're going to start maybe by doing a make clean. So all this does is just make certain it just deletes everything that uh, any previous build products that might have been in your directory. Right, so it, it cleans up your project, puts you back to a clean state. Um, and then you wanna do a make all, okay? Or if you don't specify a target by default, uh, just doing make and you don't specify what you wanna make, will make everything. In this case, it makes all of the executables um, that are defined for our assignments for the class, all right? So what you should, should see just a little bit of explanation for this. I've already done this a couple of times. Is is it's it's using you know we're using C plus plus for the assignments for this class, so it's using the G plus plus compiler, which is the GNU version of the C plus plus compiler, a free, open source version of the C plus plus compiler. So what it does is it, it compiles files separately. So the first line is compiling the example one test CPP file into what's known as an object file, right? With some flags. So again, this is just a command. I, I could I could run these commands from the command line, uh, just like I showed for the ls command. So I could do g plus plus, give it a command to, to treat all warnings uh, to give to show me all warnings. So that's what the w dash w all does. <coughs> and we're going to be kind of strict here. So even things that that are actually warnings instead of errors, it's gonna treat them as errors, okay? So we're gonna make you actually clean up warnings uh, in order to get your code to compile by having this dash W error flag in there. Uh, dash G will compile stuff using, with debug information, I skipped one, but, but so we can run our debugger uh, if we need to. Dash pedantic is kind of like uh, treating all errors as warnings. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be kind of strict. So you um, it's gonna complain about stuff if you don't um, um, make your code kind of nice and pretty by having the pedantic flag on there. Um, dash i is just a, an additional place to look for. So if I include files, if it can't find it in my in this directory, my current directory, uh, it'll also look back two directories up in the include directory um, to see if it can find the file you wanna include there. That's in addition, there, there's standard places on the system that looks for include files, like for system files, it'll, it, it, it looks not only just in your current directory and in any files that you specify here, but it'll look in some standard places like user include to find header files that you wanna include and stuff like that. <clears throat> Uh, dash C means that I want to compile this file, but uh, uh, create, I want to stop, I don't want to link it together. I want to stop as an object file because we're going to do what's known as separate compilation. So we're going to compile each file individually, and then we do stuff to link them together into executables, right? <clears throat> so dash O just means the output, the, re the result of doing this compilation is to output it into a file name example 01 test.o. Right. So if I uh, typed all that right, um, so I had a spelling mistake there, P-E-D-A-N-T-I-C, uh, it should um, 
actually build the file for you. Um, oh, I skipped, I, I didn't give the name of the file as input. So example 01 tests.cpp is the file that we're trying to compile um, and trying to output it as the object file. So, and if I can spell it correctly, tests. So the, the, the main drawback from working for the command line is that, that you know, right, you need to be um, uh, somewhat of a good typist. Um, although you notice um, I do, you know, th there's lots of things if you get in and learn the command line that will help you. So I don't retype these commands from scratch every time. I use uh, the, 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 the command line terminal in Linux will keep the history for you. So if I do up arrow, it'll bring up my previous commands. And if I do down arrow, it'll bring up my, you know, so it'll go scroll up and down through my history. So if I do up arrow once, I, I could bring up that previous command and then you can edit it. So you can do left and right arrow. Uh, and there's other keyboard shortcuts like control A to go to the beginning, control E to go to the end, um, and, and so on that I've learned. You, you can Google um, and, and learn those. Um, so anyway, so, so yeah, it's, instead of retyping it all every time from scratch, I would just bring it back up and edit the mistake that I did. So we'll see if I got it right this time. Nope. Um, so, and I meant that the input file is CPP and the output file is the object file. There we go, finally. So after all that struggle, I got it. So that, that's one of the reasons why you want to have a make system. You don't want to be building, you don't, don't want to have to enter these commands all by hand every time you want to rebuild your project. You want to get it in there so I can just say make build and then boom, it rebuilds everything that's out of date, links it together and you get your executables. Um, all right, um, and then the result of that, um, and I mean, those are the basic ones, well, I'll show you one more here, but the result of that for CSCI 430 is you actually end up with um, two executables, an executable called test and an executable called sim, okay? Um, and you can run these by hand, so I can do dot slash sim to run the sim executable. All right, so for the example one project, um, um, if you watch the video, example one is a, is a thing for um, finding prime. So we write some functions to find prime numbers, right? Oh, by the way, if, if your text is taking too long to end, you can always hit control C. This is what I talked about. Control C is the interrupt uh, for your terminal there. So, um, You can also run the system test by hand by doing dot slash test. So you'll need to watch my video about how we do assignments in this class, although I'll talk more about this in our help sessions uh, on Wednesday and uh, you have a little bit of time before the first program assignment, right? But this is kind of what you want to get. You want to get all of your unit tests to be passing um, for your assignments uh, for the class. So. For your first assignment, um, if I go back, uh, uh, I'm kind of running out of time there, but if I go to the, um, when you start your first assignment, uh, it should, everything should build. So uh, if you do a, a, a make all, um, everything should cleanly build. So if I didn't already mention, if it, if it doesn't, so when you first, you know, the very first time you try and build your project, if it doesn't compile into executables, let me know, right? It should. You always want to make certain that you, your program is success, you know, your, your build system is successfully compiling. So never write too much code um, if your program is not compiling. Always go back and make certain everything compiles, right? Uh, but, um, um, although it'll build, it won't run the unit tests, okay? So nor for the assignments, uh, you'll have some unit tests defined, but a lot of them won't be working, they'll be failing. So your, your basic workflow is you have to add code to get these unit tests to pass until you get to that state where uh, you so see all the tests passing at the end there. So. Um, So you can run that by hand, or you can use the make uh, run um, 
target. Sorry, it's not make run. I, I really do need to, sorry about this. I do need to fix this um, reference here for the, for the 430 class. So uh, the, the target is make uh, um, tests. So make tests will run both the unit tests and the system tests for these assignments here for the CSCI 430 class. So here you get so what it's doing is, it's, and I'll talk more about system tests maybe at a different time. So there's two kinds of tests. There's the unit tests, which are mostly what you need for the assignments for this class, but there's also gonna be a system test for each one of these assignments as well that, that you might have to do some stuff to work on. So. Um, all right, there's some other things. So um, uh, we've actually got um, um, a documentation system set up for these. Uh, you won't have to do too much for that, uh, except I will be requiring you to, um, to write documentation for all the functions and classes that you write for this class. So you'll see more about that as you do assignments, right? But you can build the reference reference but documentation by doing a make docs um, and that should end up creating um, some folders called um, um, so if you go into the project you're working on after you do a make docs you'll have an HTML folder which has the HTML documentation uh, and you have a latex folder that you can use to build PDF documentation the, the same documentation but with PDF so so you can bring that up if you want to and like say open up the index.html uh, to open it up in a browser um, and browse through your uh, your project or assignment documentation that you have. So. Yeah, the video is being recorded. Um, I will have to check and see how I can get it. I might, I might just have to put these on YouTube again. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll try and get these up. So, so yeah, so people that don't uh, can't or don't want to should be able to also see these help sessions asynchronously. Um, um, all right. Yeah, and then to, just to finish up, so I'm going to have to finish up here uh, for my next class. Um, so yeah, the final thing I already showed the make submit. So, so the final thing you'll do for, for this first example project and for all your um, assignments for this class, uh, once you got everything working and are ready to sum submit, uh, you should do the make submit command. All right. Um, and as I already mentioned, so this will create a tar gzip, gzip file, um, which you should be able to see in whatever assignment you're working on. Um, and then that's the thing you have to upload to, uh, to our MyLeo online for uh, grading um, in, the, in the class, all right? So yeah, I mean, you could, you could upload that in, you know, you could log into MyLeo online inside of your guest machine and just upload it from there. Or again, you know, this folder is shared with your, with your host machine, so you could use your, Firefox or whatever browser on your host machine and, and browse to the, your repository um, and find it uh, in there uh, after you do the make submit from your dev box um, and upload it from there. So I hmm, don't know why that, I don't know if I've got connectivity issues or if my Leo online's down. Yeah, I'm connected. Huh. Well, anyway. Um, Okay, yeah, so that's probably, I think, some of the most important stuff to get you started, right? So I'm probably going to go ahead and, well, I'll, I'm going to open up if there's any last questions here. Like I said, I'm going to have to kind of move on for the next class I have here, so I'll be stopping in a moment. But, um, but yeah, let me know if you have some questions here. I'll hang around for a few more minutes. Just type them out or um, unmute. Uh, so I had a question. Uh, are these uh, I I came late because uh, I had a class, and are these sessions uh, recorded? Uh, yes, um, I will try and make certain that I get them recorded. This one is recorded. Um, 
So I'll try to get them recorded and I'll post them somehow. So I got to work that out, but, uh, but I definitely recorded this session and we'll, we'll make it available. Uh, same question. So where can we find this video again then? On Zoom or um, are you going to post it somewhere I, yeah, else? I, I don't know. I'll probably, I mean, I'll, I'll probably, you know, if, if you found it, I've, I've got a uh, YouTube channel set up with a playlist. So I, I, I'm thinking I'm probably just going to put these into the YouTube and add them to the end of my playlist, maybe. Oh, okay. But so I, are you going to email us the link? Yeah, the, the, the link for the YouTube um, channel. The, the link for the My Leo uh, online is... Um, you can find it in the README. So if you look at the README, uh, it's also in MyLeo Online uh, and under the Get It Started. But um, um, if you bring up our README here, bring up our class repository. Probably should have put it close to the top. I think I think it's near the bottom, which is why you maybe didn't see it in this README here. So, under like additional resources for the class and stuff. Um, but um, yeah, my rural rural Texas bandwidth here is not great. So if you scroll down to uh, additional course information, yeah, it's right down there at the very bottom. So. Um, but yeah, that should get you to, hopefully I got the link correct, to the CSCI 430 um, video class list there. So. All right, any last questions? All right, with that, I'm gonna have to end the session and move on. Uh, yeah, feel free to send me um, you know, emails, um, whatever help you need or questions or things. Um, and uh, um, yeah, and we will be, I will do this again on Wednesday and we'll see, I, I don't wanna talk the whole time like this usually. So, so be prepared to come with questions or else, you know, I, I will probably usually kind of wait for people to ask me questions. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, feel free to hang out um, on these and, and uh, work on your assignments and things. Um, uh, and, and we'll see if people, people have questions while they're doing stuff uh, while we do these sessions. And Professor, you're going to like post this video by today, right? Uh, I, I'm sure. Uh, I, will, I will try to. Um, I've got another class until 6.30, so it might be later. But, uh, but yeah, okay. If you're looking for it, um, yeah. I'll try to do this one first here. Thank you. All right.